It's Bloody Jacob here to bring another horror movie review, and this time we're going to be talking about Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight. Bloody Jacob. Bloody Jacob here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. Yeah, so this this movie was one I watched actually a couple of few weeks back. Um, it's actually uh, touted as the first you know, like Polish slasher film. Um, I'd just seen it scrolling through Netflix and I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm kind of in the mood for that uh, you know, traditional but good, you know, slasher film if it's done well and one I hadn't seen before. You know, it was, you know, leading up to Halloween, so, you know, I was wanting to watch as much horror as I could. Um, and uh, what, uh, what a pleasant surprise this was, actually. Um, Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight uh, is one of my favorite you know, horror films I've seen in a while, actually. Uh, like I said, it's a Polish film, so there are like a bit of dubs, but they, they don't sound too bad. The audio is synced fine. Um, and I do think there are some people talking in English. E e either that, or it's just, again, synced really well, so either way, it, it doesn't bother me. Um, but yeah, I gotta say, I really enjoyed this film. Um, it's not very long. It's about a group of technology-dependent teenagers who go to offline camp and face a deadly danger lurking in the woods. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, it's completely spoil the film because it's still, you know, relatively new. Um, but I, I adored it. I mean, uh, our cast here, you know, it's basically full of stereotypes, but some actually really decent acting, you know, from the from the younger cast. Um, you, you kind of have your, you know, closet homosexual, you have your, uh, you know, your typical blonde, you know, slut, perhaps, maybe, but there's actually a little more to this one. Um, you know, you have, like, your kind of supposed cool guy, um, and you have the kind of the damaged sort of outcast chick, um, and then you have your nerd. Uh, you know, but it all works, you know, pretty well, and there's, like, there's another layer to each of them, really, so I think, uh... They actually did enough different with it to make it their own. Um, and I want to talk about, uh, I'm probably not going to be able to pronounce her name because these are all, you know, Polish actors as far as I know. Um, but Julia Winawa as our lead, uh, Zaska. Um, really, really good. She gave a good performance, actually. Excellent. Um, a really good, you know, sort of final girl, you know, heroine for the film. Um, she's she's not dumb. She's competent, but she's not like uh, smart to the point where you question question it either. Um, you know, so you know she still has some you know cliches she falls into when she deals with shit. But she feels like a real semi real person anyway, and I, I actually liked her quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed her and you know sort of her little arc within the film. Um, and yeah, I gotta say, uh, the director did a really, really nice job shooting this. There's a lot of actually decent scenery shots. They they shot this all on location, by the way. Um, it looks really nice. Like it's very vibrant, very bright. Um, and not to blame being distracting. I just mean it feels, you know, like they're really there and they were. Um, it looks uh, actually kind of gorgeous at times. Um, and the makeup itself, I think, uh, is superb. And I, I really like these, uh, you know, this creature here. Um, I think it looks really, really good. Um, some of these sort of, the style of film sort of reminds you of like a combination of like a tiny bit of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but with some of uh, Ron Turn and uh, The Hills Have Eyes thrown into it. Um, so think that sort of thing. Um, but, but they make what's going on in, in the woods kind of their own thing too, but that's kind of the style of uh, threat that's going on anyway, in a general sense. Um, and the, the thing itself reminds you of like a combination of one of those, like one of the Hills Have Eyes things, and then like uh, Victor Crowley from the Hatchet movies or something. Um, so I liked him a lot. Uh, you know, there's some uh, brutal kills in this. Uh, you know, there, there's a there's a decent body count as well, and a couple of characters are disposed of rather un un unapologetically. So so be ready for that. Um, it is a bit slow. It's a bit of a slow burn. So I'm, some, I'm sure some people just tuned out. 
Um, but for actual fans like me, I think this is a really nice entry into the genre that shouldn't be overlooked. Definitely seek this out, because um, very, very rarely do we get like a worthwhile horror flick, and uh, I think this is one of them, one of the best slashers I've seen in years. Um, and probably one of their movies of 2020, thus, you know, despite all the problems 2020's had. Uh, so yeah, and actually it's a really cool ending. I wouldn't mind seeing a possible follow-up to it somehow. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, please seek out uh, Nobody Sleeps in the Woods tonight. I've been seeing like a few more casual horror fans I'm friends with on Facebook that don't necessarily know as much about the genre as I do that say, oh yeah, this is actually pretty good. I just check it out. So yeah, check it out. You know, let me know your take. Uh, so yeah, if I had to rate it, um, I'd give it a B plus, really. Uh, so follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.